Okay, we've got a quick week this week. Up first is a new safety team announced by OpenAI, and this is the preparedness team. The third safety team OpenAI has announced, confusing, keeping track of them all, but thankfully they've laid them out in a rubric for us. So essentially there's three primary teams, safety systems team, the new preparedness team, and the super alignment team, and those are each targeting different timelines different timeframes and risks for models. So the safety systems is for existing current models. The preparedness is for frontier models. That's basically like the next model that's on deck, for example, GPT-5. And the last team super alignment is for distant future super intelligent models. So the purpose of the preparedness team is to create basically a preparedness framework as they've laid it out, an approach for developing and deploying frontier models safely. They will set out a number of areas of risk. For example, they said cybersecurity, CBRN, which is uh, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear threats, persuasion, model autonomy, and then they will grade a new model in four different levels, low, medium, high, or critical risk. So if any of the scores is higher than medium or low, then they say a model will not be deployed. It's good, again, to see these kinds of developments coming from within OpenAI. It's also nice to see like a simplicity in this blog post. And they've been very discreet about the types of work that they plan to do, about the framework that they're planning to establish. And there's clearly a lot more work to be done. This could be a really useful framework potentially beyond OpenAI's development of new models. I would like to see these kinds of frameworks just become universally applicable. If there's only one company that's applying a framework to their model releases, then it's only a matter of time before another company catches up, especially if we're going to see diminishing returns going forward and other companies can start to catch up to the point that OpenAI is at. Next is a blog post from Google. We'll go through this one pretty quick. There's some hype around this new model called Video Poet, which is a simple modeling method that essentially takes in four different streams or potential streams of input, and it's combining images, video, audio clips using video tokenizer and audio tokenizers. They say that these are compatible with text-based language models, facilitating integration with other modalities. It's basically a framework that allows you to plug in different modalities and model types to generate new types of visuals, in particular videos is what they're leaning into here. And they show a lot of interesting examples of many different video modification approaches, things like zero shot controllable camera motions or applying unique visual styles and effects to existing videos, do image to video generation. There's basically a lot of different capabilities here. There's some interesting looking stuff. Some of the videos in particular look higher quality really than stuff we've seen before, in my opinion. However, there's no public usage of this model. It's likely something that's going to eventually be rolled in with some kind of suite of Gemini Ultra product or not entirely sure yet, but it's also possible that it's just extremely expensive to run this kind of model and there's a fair amount of complexity involved. Last piece of news, massive hype startup called Etched building a transformer supercomputer. So it's called Etched because they're etching transformers directly into silicon. And this is a company founded by a couple of Harvard dropouts. I have to say, I love that they're college dropouts because we know that venture capitalists love Harvard graduates, but the only thing they love more than Harvard graduates and Stanford graduates are dropouts from Ivy Leagues. So these Harvard dropouts have decided to make a huge gamble as they say it, we're taking a big gamble on the transformer architecture. Say transformer architecture is the architecture of the future. And currently, inference and compute systems are built to be usable in a number of different applications like GPU, CPU, memory, etc. This all plugs together and then it's software that enables accelerated training of things like transformers and inference. And they're saying, screw that. Throw the software out the window, etch the transformer architecture directly into our chips. And they're going to be way better than anything you've ever seen before. And they're going to be cheap, cheaper to do inference on. There's a few problems I have with this. They don't offer any specific details about their new chips. They have this wonderful graphic that has no metrics in it, but it shows NVIDIA eight times A100 GPUs and with a certain amount of token per second performance as a tiny little squat bar. And then in NVIDIA eight times H100 tokens per second as a slightly taller bar. And then the etched eight times Sohu is basically to the moon. They're promising to the moon performance on their etched transformers. My honest opinion here is that the idea inherently is really interesting and really compelling, which is let's go all in on this architecture. Let's like design our chips backwards. So we're not, it's not that people are designing software to run on existing chips. We're going to design hardware to quickly run existing software because 
Transformers are really cool. We've shown that Transformers are scalable, but we need more compute. Maybe Transformers aren't the answer, but it's a very appealing message, right? A few things worth mentioning are that they're not providing any numbers about performance. The only thing they've really told us is that there's 144 gigabytes HB and 3E memory per chip. But it's nothing that we haven't seen before and it's nothing that's gonna totally change the game. I think the idea is really interesting, but the skeptic within me says that if two 20 year old Harvard dropouts can go build this thing and make billions of dollars, why wouldn't the most influential silicon manufacturers and semiconductor manufacturers in the world with the best talent in the world. So we'll have to see more details from Etched until we can really see if there's any validity to their claims here. That's all for this last week of 2023. Next week, we'll be taking a vacation. Happy holidays.